Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm naturalist Paul here at Wood Lake, and today we are doing some bird banding. It's been a long time since we've done that here on site, and we're excited to share some of the birds that we've safely caught and have brought back to our station here uh, to put a, a little metal band on their foot and send them on their way, hoping to recapture them. Both birds we caught today come to this area every year to nest, so we're hoping we'll catch them in the future. Um, while we, after we pull them out of the net, we safely bring them back to the table in these little cloth bags. They're able to breathe in them, but they also don't get um, too nervous about seeing too many things, and they, they don't get as tangled up as they might in a mesh bag. Um, so I'm gonna see what kind of birds in here, and then try to figure out a few other bits of information. Oh, it looks like a red-winged blackbird. These are very common birds in wetlands. You might see them in roadside ditches as you drive further north in Minnesota. Um, anywhere there's a cattail, there's bound to be a pair of um, red-winged blackbirds. Um, with all the black feathers and just the red on the wing, that lets me know one of my big questions. Is this a male or a female? This bird has the plumage that guarantees it's a male. And that's important for me to find out really quickly with this species because remember my main goal is to put a band on its foot well, the males are so much larger than the females in this species, they have different size feet. So I have to put a different size band on. So I have to know that before I can go any further. Um, so because birds don't necessarily want to be in my hand, I'm going to put the band on right away. Um, so I don't, so even if I, if it does get free, I already know some of the information. So the bands are little pieces of aluminum. They're given to us by the um, federal government, the U.S. Geologic Service, it runs the banding lab, and they'll give us these for free. We have to have a permit. There's about 2,000 permits in the U.S., um, and you have to know a lot about birds, how to handle them, and also um, how to uh, know what you're looking at. Um, so this bird is a red-winged blackbird, a male. I look in my book, and it says I need a size 2. So I'm going to go with the largest size we commonly use. I'm going to confirm that my number on the band matches up with what I have in my notebook. Um, because otherwise, everything I'm writing down will be lost. 11520442429. That's right. There's nine numbers on these little bands. Nine numbers. Inside, there's an address. An email, there's, an, there's an email address, a website, and a phone number inside. So lots of stuff on these little tiny aluminum bands. Open it up, I'm gonna use a special pair of pliers that has holes drilled in it. And there's also a little peg on the front that allows me to open it. So there's the peg, and those are the holes. Now I picked up the size I normally use. For this bird, I need a one size bigger. So I just got the bigger holes. Um, pop that open. Now the fact that it started in the circle, I can open it up into a C is important. Um, it's going to allow me to slide it around the bird's foot right here. I'm going to hold it in place, and I'm going to be able to make it back into that perfect little bracelet or circle. I want to make sure I don't hurt the bird. My whole goal is that this bird goes on, lives a happy, long life, and we're able to track it through time, through space, and just know how long it lives. So, it's loose, kind of like a bracelet for us. Um, it has that code, and it's the only bird in North America that's being given that code. Um, it's kind of cool. Kind of like a social security number, which you might not know about right now, or maybe you do. It's the same idea. Um, so now I need to write down what I've got. Red-winged blackbird, and I know that it was a male because of the plumage. All right, male plumage. Other thing I want to try to figure out is how old is it? So with people, we're one, we're two, we're three. With birds, a bird like this, you're either going to be born this year, we'll call that a hatching year. This bird is not a hatching year. It's an adult. But how old is it? With all these black feathers, I know it wasn't born last year. It was born in at least 2018. Could have been earlier. I don't know that information at this point. If I catch it when it's first born, I can track it through its whole life. This bird, eh, it's at least two. So what I call is an after second year bird. And I can tell that in the spring. That's, that's all I know. Um, and I know that it has a strong beak. 
uh, eats lots of insects and it likes to bite my finger, which I always think makes a lot of sense that they want to bite my finger. Um, the one measurement we take here uh, consistently is the length of the wing. So when we think about the wing of the bird, this one's so beautiful with the red and the yellow up there. Um, if we slide up right underneath the curved part of the wing and we go to the very tip of the longest flight feather and we get a 122 millimeters. These birds are flying to Mexico, Canada, rest of the world. We use the metric system. Science tends to use metric because that way it's accessible to everyone. So 122. I'm just going to make sure that that sits in where it says and it does for the male. Um, that's everything I need to know from this bird. So what I do then is I let this bird go. And to do that, I'm simply going to let it bite me again. I'm simply going to set it in my other hand, open up my top hand, and away it goes. Now, that bird's going to be here the rest of the summer, probably till August or September. They'll all start to migrate. They go to the southern U.S. to migrate. And um, we hope that we'll catch it again next summer. Ah, uh, another bird, another day. Oh. Hey, how's it going, Sierra? It's going all right. How about you? Going pretty well. Why do you have a bird in your hand? Um, I don't know. Just do. You, you just, did you I, catch well, it? I did. I did catch it. With um, your hands? That's really impressive. Well, I'm holding it with my hands, but I didn't catch it with my hands. What oh. we did, um, there's several ways you can safely um, catch birds for research. Okay. And one research. of the ways. Research? So yeah, science. Science. And that's science. exactly what we're doing. Um, and what we use today is something called a mist net. So it's a net that lifts. It's hard to see. It looks misty. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like fog. Like fog, exactly. Okay. Um, mist just sounds a little more mysterious. Sorry. Um, so I like it. We've got um, this little bird right here. We what just, kind of bird we just is caught that? it. It's in a group of um, birds called sparrows. And they have the little conical beak. It lets us know they're going to eat seeds. Looks like a triangle. It looks like a triangle. Yes. And this bird right here um, has all those streaks in the front of it. I see um, that. And some gray above its eye and in its cheek patch. And that lets me know that it's a song sparrow. Why is it called a song sparrow? Well, it does likes it to sing? sing. It does. But most birds sing. I love to sing too. Wow. Nice. Thank you. Song sparrows, um, the males in the bird world primarily sing. Female cardinals are a wonderful exception. Oh, okay. And, um, but song sparrows learn a song from their parent, their, oh. their dad. And then they learn the songs of all the nesting territories right around them. So they're, it's like um, the radio station that's going to play all the same ones everyone else does, but also their best single. So they, they're only they know. So that's you crazy. go a couple miles over in the forest, you'll still hear song sparrows, but they'll sound a little bit different. So they all, they write their own songs? Exactly. That's amazing. On a variation. I've heard there's over hundreds of different variations that these birds just sing. And these oh. birds are found across the United States. But we have lots of them right here at Woodland, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. Do you want to see how the, how the research works? Yes, I would love, awesome. I love science. Science is so cool. So the first thing what I need, need to know to is what kind of bird it is. Do you remember what it was? Um, it sings. Yep. And it has a, a triangle beak. Yep. I think it's a singing sorrow. You're very close. It's called a song sparrow. Oh, yep. song sparrow. Song sparrow. Um, what I need to do is write down in my book here the date. It's a really um, big book. It is a very big book. And where I'm at. So I, so when I turn all this information into the, the government who's running this research project, they'll know where this bird was when we caught it. Okay. Um, so I need to know what a song sparrow, that it's a song sparrow, and then I have to go answer a lot of questions. That's an even bigger book. This is an even bigger book. Wait, um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so do you put all of these this information online? This information gets entered into a database that goes directly to the banding lab, and if you ask the banding lab, they will give you the data. Oh, yep. that's really cool. Yeah, it's available to anybody who has a research project. That's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty neat huh. system. So this bird, I'm going to put it back into my banders grip where I'm loosely holding it, so oh, it doesn't, so it doesn't move hurt? too much and it doesn't get hurt exactly. Okay. 
I'm going to put a band on it first. Um, this band, you see this little tiny aluminum band? I, that's really, really small. Two, I don't think it would fit on my pinky. Seven, seven, one, four, six, six, zero, eight is the number. That's nine numbers here. Nine numbers. That's a lot of numbers. It that's, is. I think that's more than a phone number. The nice thing is, is it lines up exactly with my data book. So I'm, I'm keeping information on the correct line, um, okay. which is nice. If it was wrong... Oh, we'd have to do some backtracking and figure out what we messed up. That now, sounds like a lot more work. It would have been. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open this band up and I'm going to close it back on the bird's foot. Does yeah. it hurt the bird? It doesn't. If it hurt the bird, the whole idea of banding wouldn't work very well. Because we want to know where this bird goes, mm -hmm. how long it lives, where it migrates to, um, all kinds of stuff. But we want to do it when it's healthy. So, what so you're I'm pretty do, much giving it a bracelet. I'm giving it a bracelet. Okay. So I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to hold it with my pinky and I'm going to use these little holes. See those? I can see through them. To close the band up. And it goes right around the bird's foot and it's loose and safe. And I want to make sure it's closed all the way so it doesn't get snagged on anything. So there it is. It's on that bird. And it and moves around perfect. Yeah, it worked out That's really, really well. Now, because I have it in this grip still, I'm going to measure one part of this bird. What, one do, you think, what do you think I might measure? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to use this ruler. You use the ruler? Yeah. It has an end on the air. It does. Um. Hmm. Maybe Look. it's it's height. I get measured for my height. We could measure the whole length of the bird, um, but we don't. We only measure one part of it. Hmm. Sometimes people will measure the tail. We don't measure the tail here. Sometimes you'll measure the length of the beak. We're not going to do that either. Hmm. Something very important in that only birds and a few other animals have. Wings! Wings, exactly. Wings. The wings. So, here are the wings. And right down there it goes to 68 millimeters. 60. Oh, millimeters. Now, if it what? would have been longer than 68, it would have let me know it was a male. So that answers one of our questions. So it tells you that it's a girl bird? It tells me that it's one or the other. We don't know. Science doesn't know that yet. If it's shorter than 61, it would be a, it would be a girl bird. And if it's longer than 68, it'd be a male bird. But if it's in between, it can be either the male or the female. So it just tells us we don't know. Whoa, there that's is, so cool. Wait, if... If there's a bare spot on the on the belly of this bird, mm -hmm. let me know that it is a female. Hey. Now, it's late June, really fluffy. so it could have been a female and she's already regrown her feathers because they lose those feathers when they're sitting on the eggs to keep them warm. Oh, that makes sense. It's called a brood patch. The male um, is harder to tell. It's earlier in the spring, you might be able to tell they're that, really the, fluffy. that the male is ready to... They are very fluffy. You're exactly right. Okay. And the one thing that's going to help me tell how old this bird is, is looking at its tail. You see how the tail is really pretty, but it's also kind of pointy and looks kind of in roughish shape? Mm -hmm. Those things let me know that it wasn't born this year. So this is an mm. after hatching year bird okay. in June. Um, that's what I said. And what that means is it wasn't born this year. Oh. If it was hatching year, it'd be 2020. If it was after hatching year, it'd be sometime before. And a bird like a sparrow can live on average about three years. And a song sparrow, um, the longest, maybe seven or eight years. I don't know that off the top of my head. Whoa. I can look it up real quick. That's um, really impressive. It is very impressive. I didn't think birds, I didn't know how long birds live, but I, I guess... I didn't expect them to live for only a few years. Well, it's it's a good reminder that they um, might not live as long as, as we think. But then again, sometimes they surprise us. I just looked it up. The longest a song sparrow has lived is 11 and a half years. That's a long time. It's a very long time. But the average is only three. So some live super long, some some don't. So okay. birds have a have a tough have a tough go of it. But we're going to learn more from doing this research. So. That's what we. That's why we're doing it. That's so really cool, Paul. A H Y unknown. So after hatching year, we don't know if it's male or female. We had the wing cord. This bird. Can go. You want to watch it fly off, here? Yes, I love right. flying. So birds. I'm gonna have it in my hand. I'm gonna set it okay. in my other hand. I'm gonna okay. open up my first hand. 
Whoa, that was fast. That was really quick. Very I wasn't fast. expecting that. But that's what we do. And the idea is to get them in out of the net and away from the table as fast as possible so they can go back to doing what birds need to do. That's so Find cool, Paul. Yeah. Learning so many different things. Is okay, so the thing that you use to measure the the wings? A wing ruler. A wing ruler. Yes. Okay. And why do we use millimeters? We use millimeters because um, the metric system is utilized by most countries around the world. In America, we use the English system, feet and inches. Um, yeah. But with um, with the metric going with the size, like these smaller numbers, it's, it makes it a little bit easier. Plus, um, a song sparrow is going to mainly last in, or mainly spend the winter in southern southern U.S. But they might make it to Mexico, and some of them make it to Canada. Both of those countries. You know, Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Not right now, but I know exactly who to go to if I have any questions. Yeah, you can always stop, stop one of the naturalists at Wood Lake or ask us. Or there's all kinds of information online as well. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go look for birds then. Awesome. All right, bye, Paul. See you, Lizia. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Keep your eyes and ears open for birds.